Hello friends. Uh, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Aubrey. I'm so glad to have you all here because today we are going to go over 35 books or series that I want to read um, in the year of 2024. So I will say that I do sort my TBR books, so any books that I have not read yet, in um, six different categories. So I have a different section or different category for each season where I put books that make me think of that season either because they take place then um, or just like the aesthetic or the vibes or the content just makes me like evokes the feeling of that season. So I do have one for each of the four seasons and I'm not going to be going through books that are in those categories. Uh, I do plan I think <laughs> um, the idea that I have is to maybe at the start of each season go through all of the books that I have that I haven't read uh, that I do have sorted as um, kind of a book that represents that season to me and so you can see all of the books that I have to choose from during that season. Um, but then the other two categories are priority books and non-priority books. So. I, any books that I have that I am just super excited to read that maybe don't fall into one of those seasonal categories um, or that I'm just like prioritizing even above that, I do have sorted separately. And then I have books over here that are not priority books. So maybe I, you know, have, am missing like the first book in the series and I don't plan on getting it necessarily anytime soon or... Um, it's just a book that I know I want to read at some point, but I have books that I want to read more currently, um, if that makes sense. So the 35 that we're going to go through today come from my priority books category. So again, I'm not going to, these, I'm not going to go through any books or include any books that fall into one of those seasonal groups. Um, we'll look at those at a later time. So 35 is a lot to get through, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first one that I have is actually a nonfiction, and I've wanted to read this book for quite a while, um, and that is Of Wolves and Men by Barry Lopez. So wolves are one of my favorite animals. I love them so much, and they are so misunderstood um, in media and have been just for so, so long, and that tends to, like, perpetuate these stereotypes and stuff throughout society. So this book talks about kind of people's relationship with wolves throughout history. I'm not sure exactly how far back it goes or how current it gets, um, but it also talks just a lot about the way that people perceive wolves and then the way that they actually are, so how they actually behave. And um, I just think it'll be really wonderful to read and to learn more about one of my favorite animals and also just to give some more insight into someone who is trying to um, like push back against those negative stereotypes that we tend to view wolves in like as a society. So I'm really excited to read this one and I hope that I get to it this year, maybe sometime this summer, I'm thinking. And then the next book that I want to read is the first book in a series, and that is A Memoir by Lady Trent by Marie Brennan. So this is book one, A Natural History of Dragons. I think I've mentioned in a video before, I love dragons. So if you give me a book that has dragons in it, especially when they are being depicted as more than just like mindless killing machines, it makes me very happy. Um, and so this series follows Marie Brennan, who... I'm not Marie Brennan. I'm sorry, that's the author. The series follows Lady Trent, who is writing a memoir about her. So at this point, as she's writing it, she is older and she's writing a memoir about her adventures and her scientific exploits when she was younger studying dragons. And that's really all that I know about it. But again, I love dragons and I really hope that I like this series because I know that there are multiple books in it and they all I think explore different types of dragons so I'm really again excited to try this um and it also I also was a bio major in undergrad so like the anatomical drawings and stuff I eat stuff like that up and I know it's not illustrated but I hope I hope that it does 
kind of address that biological naturalist aspect quite a bit and relates it to dragons because uh, that just sounds so wonderful and delightful. So that is that one. I'm very much looking forward to it. And then the third book is again the first book in a series um, and it's actually a pretty recent purchase so you guys will have seen it in one of my previous book hauls and that is Associate Professor Akira Takatsuki's Conjecture by Mikage Sawamura. Sawamura. <laughs> so this is the first book, Folklore Studies. I do also have the second book because light novels are so short. Um, most of them. <laughs> some of them are not. I'm thinking like some of the like longer Danmei series are longer, um, but some of them are fairly short. And so like with manga, I sometimes get the first two to try out. So this is just the first one. Um, but if I like it, then I'll continue on to the second one. But it says on the back, truth is stranger than fiction. Naoya Fukumachi is a university student whose ability to infallibly detect lies has left him friendless and isolated. When he writes a paper about a strange festival he wandered into as a child though, he catches the fancy of his folklore studies professor, Akira Takatsuki, a handsome and eccentric man with a passion for all things mysterious. Soon, Naoya finds himself working as Akira's assistant, helping him interpret an array of unexplainable phenomena, from haunted objects and cursed effigies to urban legends. As this odd couple continues their investigations, however, Naoya realizes that his professor has had a few bizarre childhood experiences of his own. So it sounds like it's going to have a lot of Japanese folklore, and I love stuff like that. And there is a manga series that has started based off of the light novels. So if I really like the light novels, I will continue with that and then also maybe start getting the manga so that I can see it illustrated in that format as well. Then the next book that I have on this list that I really want to read this year um, has also been sitting on my shelves for a while. And the third and final book in this trilogy is supposed to come out, I think, later this year. So I really need to try this and see how I feel about it so I can continue on. But that is The Blood Sworn by John Gwynn. So this is the first book, The Shadow of the Gods. And we have a very large dragon on the cover. Um, I know that this has, I think, Norse mythology in it. So that's always exciting. But the back says, legends tell of the great long ago battle of the gods. When the gods fought, it was a battle so savage they destroyed themselves, leaving nothing but their bones and the broken land of Vigrid in their wake. Now, as whispers of war echo over the fjords and across the plains, fate follows in the footsteps of three warriors, a huntress on a perilous quest, a noble woman pursuing battle fame, and a thrall seeking retribution among the mercenaries known as the Bloodsworn. All three will change the course of the world as it once more falls under the shadow of the gods. So that sounds really epic. I love fantasy books. I love big, like, epic, encompassing stories that take place in these intricate worlds. And I've heard a lot of praise about John Gwynn's writing. I have never read a John Gwynn book myself, so this is going to be my first one. And I think that I'm probably going to love this. Um, so that is definitely one that I want to try this year, especially because, like I said, the third and final book is supposed to come out, I think, later this year. So I need to see how I feel about this so I can read this one. And if I like it, then I can move on to the second book in the series. Then this next book, I absolutely love the cover on it. Um, but that is Books of the Usurper by Aaron M. Evans. This is, again, the first book, Empire of Exiles. So I do have some series in this list that I want to start that I haven't read before. But this one, again, sounds like one of those epic fantasies. And just look at that cover. It's so pretty. <laughs> a scribe, a mage, an archivist, and an investigator. Four unlikely heroes, a secret threatening an empire. Twenty-three years ago, a duke with a grudge led a ruthless coup against his empire, killing thousands. He failed. The duke was executed, a terrifyingly powerful sorcerer was imprisoned, and an unwilling princess disappeared. The empire moved on. Now Quill, an apprentice, an apprentice scribe, arrives in the capital city believing he's on a simple errand for another pompous noble. 
fetch ancient artifacts from the magical imperial archives. But these artifacts are the instruments of revolution, the banners under which the Duke led his coup, and the city has just been shaken by a brutal murder that looks to be caused by a weapon not seen since those dark days of rebellion. With Quill being the main witness to the murder and with no one in power believing his story, he must join with a young mage, a seasoned archivist, and a disillusioned investigator to find out the truth of the attack, and what they uncover will be the key to saving the Empire or destroying it. Does that not just sound wonderful? So it sounds like it's going to have this like motley crew joining together with found family and an unlikely hero and all of that is stuff that I just adore. So I think this one's going to be wonderful. And if I am remembering right, the second book in the series is either out already or coming out soon. I'm not sure, but I, I really think that I'm going to like this. So this is probably going to be one that I'm going to continue on with. And then the next one I'm so excited for. So I have been wanting again to read this one for a while ever since I got this beautiful edition from The Broken Binding. Um, but I'm waiting on the matching edition for the novella that comes after it and I plan on reading them together. But that is The Bound and the Broken by Ryan Cahill. So this is the first book of Blood and Fire and as I said this is the Broken Bindings TBB Press edition which is just beautiful. Um, and I had been wanting to read it even before they announced this edition. And so when they did, I was able to get a copy. Um, but then I was like, I feel like they're going to do matching editions for the rest of the series probably. And so I have been patiently waiting <laughs> for the fall, which I have ordered and will hopefully be shipped out soon. And I do plan on reading them together, but I feel like probably a lot of people know what this is about because it has kind of become very popular recently. Um, there isn't a synopsis that I can see in this edition to read, but I do know that it's like a Dragon Rider fantasy. And again, I've just heard so much praise for the series, so I'm super excited to read it. And really, all I needed to hear was Dragon Rider. And then I was hooked. <laughs> so once the fall comes in, I'm going to be reading these two together. And I really am so excited. I want to see what everyone has been talking about with this. And I hope that I love it. <laughs> then I also have a few series in this list that I have started. And I just am trying to prioritize, con prioritize continuing them. So that is one of my goals this year is to try to make progress on some of my series. So this one is one of those, and that is The Case Files of Jeweler Richard by Nanako Tsujimura. This is book three. I have already read the first and second light novels, and there is a manga series uh, adapted from these that I am collecting, so eventually I will read those. I'm not sure if I want to maybe read them, like, at the same time as these, or maybe read through all the light novels and wait till it finishes and then read the manga. We'll see. But this series, we follow Seiki, who is a college student, and one day he rescues this guy Richard from a mugging. Richard is a jeweler who has just moved to Japan to start a business, and he decides to hire Seiki uh, to work in his store. So you just get to see the adventures that they go on with their different clients, and somehow they keep getting wrapped up in their clients' personal lives and the problems that they are dealing with, uh, their struggles. Um, and we also see just the relationship between these two evolve as they get to know each other. Um, and Seigi is learning about gemstones, and so you get to learn a lot about gemstones as the reader. And it's just really fun. It's just, like, it has some serious things that they talk about, but it's just a really light read. Um, and it's just enjoyable. I like the characters, so I definitely want to continue this one. And I do, this is book three, as I said but I do have all the way through book seven <laughs> um, already here. So I have quite a bit more to go in the series and it's not complete yet in English either. I'm not sure about in Japanese, but I know that in English um, they are still releasing volumes. So, but I need to catch up. <laughs> so that is one that I am prioritizing to try to catch up on. And the next one is another series that I need to catch up on. And that is The Case Study of Vanitas by Jun Mochizuki. 
Um, so this is volume 9. I also have volume 10, which are the two most recent volumes that have come out in English. So I was going to read volume 9 as soon as it came out, and then I was like, you know, I've already pre-ordered volume 10, I'm gonna wait till it comes in. And then once it did, I'm just really nervous to continue the story because I have an inkling of some stuff that's gonna happen in these volumes. Um, and it makes me nervous, but I do really want to continue it soon. Um, and it is, again, still an ongoing series, so I will just be getting up to date on it, not actually completing it. But in this series, we follow two characters, uh, Venitas and Noe Arcaviste. So Noe is a vampire. Um, he was born a vampire. This does take place in an alternate steampunk Paris in sort of like the Victorian era, whatever the equivalent that would be for Paris. Um, and we follow Noe, who is a vampire, because vampires do exist, though they kind of try to hide themselves from humans a lot because there is some like fear of vampires and some discrimination there but they have like their own society and no way uh has some because of some events in his past he's an orphan he was raised by this very eccentric vampire um who he calls teacher and he had some traumatic things that happened that I'm not going to go over because of spoilers, but one day he meets Vanitas, who is human, but who claims that he is a doctor for vampires, and he possesses this book that is part of a vampire sort of legend or fairy tale, um, that it belongs to the vampire of the blue moon, who also goes by the name Vanitas, and is, ex like, believed to hate other vampires, all of the vampires of the Red Moon. So they end up kind of teaming up and becoming friends, and there's just so much drama and conflict. There are some kind of iffy bits as far as like with Noe's childhood friend who has a crush on him and he does not know, and so she kind of does some things that he interprets differently and so that kind of is icky because of consent and you know being upfront about things and also with Vanitas and his potential romantic interest but it's not really romance I don't want to get into that right now though um and it could change as it goes on but other than that I love Vanitas and Noe and the other characters in here it's just so engaging and wonderful and um I don't know the relationship between the two of them and seeing how Vanitas, who has never trusted anyone before, is like learning how to have friends and stuff. It's just wonderful and delightful. Um, and I love it. So I do need to continue. I'm just a little bit nervous <laughs> um, about what's happening in this arc. But I, this is definitely a series that I'm going to continue because I really, really love reading it. Then I have another series that I want to continue, and that is The Cemetery of Forgotten Books by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation there, but this is the second book, The Angel's Game. I did read The, Cem or the um, Shadow of the Wind a couple of years ago and loved it, and I found this one at a used bookstore and got it, so I'm very excited to continue reading it. But as far as I believe, they are standalones that kind of fit into the same world but I do think they're connected so I will read the back of this one because I don't think it contains any spoilers for the first book. At the beginning of this powerful labyrinthian thriller David Martin, a pulp fiction writer struggling to stay afloat, is holed up in an abandoned mansion in the heart of Barcelona furiously tapping out story after story becoming increasingly desperate and frustrated. When he is approached by a mysterious publisher offering a book deal that seems almost too good to be real, David leaps at the chance. But as he begins the work, and after a visit to the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, he realizes that there is a connection between his book and the shadows that surround his dilapidated home, and that the publisher may be hiding a few troubling secrets of his own. Once again, Carlos Ruiz Zafon takes us into a dark, gothic Barcelona and creates a breathtaking tale of intrigue, romance, and tragedy. So, that one I'm very excited to try as well. 
Next, I have another series that I would like to start, and I had never heard about this series before until I saw this book at a used bookstore, and I got it because I was very intrigued, and then when I did a little research, I realized it is actually the first book in a series. So that is The Ill-Made Knight by Christian Cameron, and the series, I believe, is called Chivalry. So it is, I think, historical fiction, um, and I just, the cover grabbed my attention, and then the back kind of sealed it for me, so... September 1356. Poitiers? Poitiers. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. The greatest knights of the age are ready to give battle. On the English side, Edward, the Black Prince, who earned his spurs at Crecy. On the French side, the King and his son, the Dauphin, with 12,000 knights. And then there is William Gold, a cook's boy, the lowest of the low, who had once been branded a thief. William dreams of being a knight, but in this savage new world of intrigue, betrayal, and greed, first he must learn to survive. As, a rapacious, English, as rapacious English mercenaries plunder a country already ravaged by plague, and the peasantry take violent revenge against the French knights who have failed to protect them, is chivalry any more than a boyish fantasy? So as I said, historical fiction taking place between uh, the battle between England and France in the 14th century, and it's dealing with knights, and again, an unlikely hero, maybe a coming of age story, I don't know, I just think it's going to be wonderful. Then I have another series that I want to continue, and that is The Chronicles of Azrath by Catherine Addison. So the first book in the series is The Goblin Emperor, and then the next two are part of a sequel series called The Cemeteries of Amalo. So I do have both of them, The Witness for the Dead and The Grief of Stones, and I do plan on reading both of them this year. Um, so this follows a side character from The Goblin Emperor, so Thara Kelahar, is that his last name? Yes, Thara Kelahar. Um, and his sort of duties as a witness for the dead, meaning that he can communicate with spirits and his job is to witness for them. So to make sure that if they were mistreated or died unjustly, that he gets justice for them. Um, that's kind of like a very vague and um, uncomplicated explanation of his, his job. But we do follow him as he moves to this town in Amalo or I the town may be called Amalo. Yes, the city of Amalo. Um, and continues his duties there. So I am sad that this isn't going to follow Maya and uh, his companions from the first book because I fell in love with those characters. But I am still super excited to delve back into this world. And I do think the third book in this series, the fourth one, in the Chronicles of Azrath, but the third in the Cemeteries of Amalo is supposed to come out, I think this year or maybe next year. So I need to get these two read so that when it comes out, I can read the next one. And then I have Countdown to Countdown by Valenci, or Valenci, Valen Valenci. So this is book one. So Countdown to Countdown is a graphic novel, but it was originally published online and it is still being published there. So this is the only physical release that is out so far. And it is a series that I started reading quite a while ago when I stumbled upon it online. And I love their art style. I think it is beautiful and wonderful. Um, and I follow them on Instagram, but when I saw that they had done a physical release for book one, I had to get it so that I can read it physically and continue the series that way. Because I do prefer to read physically than, you know, scrolling on my phone personally. That's just a personal preference of mine. But it is, like I said, just such a beautiful art style. and I'm just so excited to try it <laughs> um, or to continue it. Because like I said, I did read a little smidge of it online. In the year 2044, Demiflores, humans that have developed incredible abilities, are hunted and mutilated by spawn campers who seek to sell their organs at exorbitant prices. The story follows Iris Black, a denizen of a towering facility that seeks to protect Demiflores, but only if they accept to suppress their power. Iris's creative streak cannot be stifled, however, using his ability to bring his drawings to life, much to the dismay of his authoritarian mother. But when he runs into a demiflora from the outside world, he quickly discovers his golden cage, 
was a gilded lie. With the help of Lillian White, the tower's intruder, Iris escapes to the outside world. Countdown to Countdown dives into a unique sci-fi world seen through the eyes of a young artist and inventor that depends on his ability to forge a new home. So as I said, it is just, what I've seen so far is delightful. It does have some like violence and stuff, but I'm just excited to learn more about these two characters and the adventures that they're going on and the struggles that they have to face. And then if you saw the first book haul that I did on this channel, which was encompassed, which encompassed all of the books that I got from November to February, you would have seen that I got the Demon Slayer box set. Um, so I really do want to try reading the Demon Slayer manga. This is by Koyoharu Go Gotog? Gotoj? Something? Um, but I have seen some of the anime the first season, and so I really want to try the manga and read that and then go back and rewatch the anime and actually continue it. In Taisho era Japan, kind-hearted Tanjiro Kamado makes a living selling charcoal, but his peaceful life is shattered when a demon slaughters his entire family. His little sister Nezuko is the only survivor, but she has been transformed into a demon herself. Tanjiro sets out on a dangerous journey to find a way to return his sister to normal and destroy the demon who ruined his life. Learning to slay demons won't be easy, and Tanjiro barely knows where to start. The surprise appearance of another boy named Giyu, who seems to know what's going on, might provide some answers. But only if Tanjiro can stop Giyu from killing his sister first. So as I said, I did see season one, so I do know what's going to happen for at least a little while, but I am excited to see it in manga form and then continue and find out how the story actually ends. And then I have another series that I would like to continue, and that is Given by Natsuki Kizu. This one is also a manga like Demon Slayer. I read volume one several years ago and really, really enjoyed it. So I have since gotten volumes two through six, um, and I do have seven and eight ordered, I believe. Um, and so I do want to continue this and actually find out what happens and learn more about these characters. But we follow four characters. We have Mufuyu. Um, I'm going to have to check because it's been a while, so I don't remember all of their names. Oh, yes. Uenoyama, Akihiko, and Haruki. And so these three, Uenoyama, Akihiko, and Haruki, are all in a band. And one day Uenoyama meets Mufuyu, who wants to learn to play the guitar and is apparently a very talented singer. And he ends up convincing him to come and try out at their band. And they end up uh, kind of coming together as friends and there is some romance in here although there are some trigger warnings again I've only read the first volume but especially for Mafuyu's past there are some really traumatic things that happen there so do be aware of that going into this um but I did really enjoy the first volume and I've heard so much praise for the series and I've heard that the anime is wonderful so I do want to continue this and then check out the anime so that I can actually hear the music <laughs> Because obviously in manga form, you just kind of have to imagine it, but I would like to hear how they actually brought that to life in the anime. Next, I have another series that I would like to try, and that is Golden Terrace by Tsang Wu Bin Bai. So this is book one. I do also have book two, and I believe that it is only a duology. So if I like this one, then I'll just be able to finish the series. It is year 25 of the Yuan Tai era of the Great Zhao Empire. The renowned Marquis of Jingning, commander of the Beiyan Calv Cavalry, Fu Shen, is injured on the battlefield at the northern border. Returning with a broken leg to the capital, Fu Shen learns that the emperor has conferred a marriage for him with another man. To make matters worse, Fu Shen's spouse is his political nemesis, the famed imperial investigator of the Fei Long Guard, Yan Xiaohan. In spite of the political differences that stand between them in court, Fu Shen and Yan Xiaohan gradually start to accept each other's presence in their shared home. Yet as they learn to navigate their new life together, it is the calm before the storm. The mystery behind the attack at the northern border begins to unfold, unveiling dangers that threaten the peace of Great Zhao. So we're going to have some romance, some political intrigue, and it's set in ancient China, and it just sounds like it's going to be delightful. Then I have another manga that I would like to start, and that is The Great Cleric. So this is based on a story by Broccoli Lion and has been adapted into a manga by Hiro Akikaze. 
one man's story of turning blood, sweat, and tears into a successful living, literally. After his untimely demise as the hardest working salary man in Japan, Luciel is reincarnated into the magical fantasy world of Gal Galdardia. Always the man with a plan, he recreates himself to be a healer and sets about making his way in the world. But while Luciel knows a thing or two about making money, he knows absolutely nothing about Galdardia. Will his good heart and great work ethic be enough to make him the great cleric? So it sounds like it's going to be fun. Uh, I do have the first three volumes of this, so if I like it, then I have at least a little bit to uh, get into the story. And it's got some isekai. I really like these really chill, relaxed sort of isekai where people are just kind of figuring out this new world that they're in and trying to make a way for themselves. And so I hope that it's wholesome. I hope it doesn't have any cringy stuff in it, but we'll see. So I really, I really think that I'm going to like this one. Another series that I want to start this year is The Great Coats by Sebastian de Castell. So this is the first book, Trader's Blade. Falcio is the first cantor of the Great Coats, the elite corps of 144 men and women whose mission is to travel the land and uphold the king's law. Highly trained in the martial, diplomatic, and judicial arts, the Great Coats are heroes to all, the living, breathing symbol of King Palis's en enlightened reign. Or at least, they used to be heroes until the powerful dukes, feudal noblemen with territorial ambitions of their own, overthrew and murdered the king, placing the ex-monarch's head on a pike as a warning to his surviving supporters. In the wake of the king's death, Tristia is on the verge of collapse. The one glimmer of hope for the restoration of order is the secret set of instructions given separately to each one of the greatcoats by King Palis before his death. If Falcio and his best friends, Brassi and Kest, have any hope of fulfilling the king's mysterious final mission, they must find a way to reunite their fellow greatcoats, or else they must stand aside and watch as the world they were sworn to defend goes up in flames. So I've heard a lot of praise for this series, and again, it sounds like it's got a lot of found family and really epic fantasy adventure. Um, and I do actually have the second book as well because I saw both of these in the bargain section at Books A Million, so I was able to get them both for like $5 each or something like that. Um, so if I like it, I'll be able to just go straight into the next one, which is very exciting. And then I have yet another series that I want to start, which is Hierarchy by James Islington. So this is the first book, The Will of the Many. Um, and I've heard, again, a lot of people praise this one. This is a new series, and I do think the second book, I'm not sure if it's coming out like later this year or earlier next year, but it is, you know, being uh, prepared and gotten ready to come out relatively soon. The Catanan Republic, the hierarchy, may rule the world now, but they do not know everything. I tell them my name is Vis Telemus, or Telemus. Telemus? I feel like it might be Telemus. I tell them I was orphaned after a tragic accident three years ago, and that good fortune alone has led to my acceptance into their most prestigious school. I tell them that once I graduate, I will gladly join the rest of civilized society in allowing my strength, my drive, and my focus, what they call will, to be leached away and added to the power of those above me, as millions already do, as all must eventually do. I tell them that I belong, and they believe me. But the truth is that I have been sent to the academy to find answers, to solve a murder, to search for an ancient weapon, to uncover secrets that may tear the Republic apart, and that I will never, ever cede my will to the empire that executed my family. To survive, though, I will still have to rise through the academy's ranks. I will have to smile and make friends and pretend to be one of them and win. Because if I cannot, then those who want to control me, who know my real name, will no longer have any use for me. And if the hierarchy founds out, finds out who I truly am, they will kill me. So I did read James Islington's other series, The Lycanius Trilogy, which you can see right here, and I adored it. So I, as soon as I knew he was making another series, like starting a new book, I pre-ordered this. And I haven't read it yet, but I am planning on doing so this year, and I'm super, super excited. Another series that I want to continue this year is The Husky and His White Cat Shizen, or Arha Hata the Bai Mal Shizen by Roll Balbuchi Roll. So I did read book one of this. This is book two, and I also have books three and four already. Um, it... <laughs> 
book one had some, it, it was off to a rocky start for me with book one. I really wasn't sure that it was going to be for me personally, but it did get better by the end. So we follow um, Mo Ren, right here, who is the emperor of all of China, essentially. Um, and he dies and wakes up in the past. And he decides that he is going to get revenge for everything bad that happened to him. And he's essentially going to use this second chance to live his life the way that he wants and to essentially just use his knowledge of the future going forward. One of the people that he wants to get revenge against is his teacher or Shizun, uh, Chu Wanning. But there are some misunderstandings between the two of them and he starts to realize that he blamed his Shizun for all of these terrible things that happened to him and that maybe it wasn't actually his fault and then things start to go from there. So that's kind of the premise for the first book and going forward from there. So I, like I said at the beginning, I was just really concerned that I wasn't going to like it. There are a lot of trigger warnings in the series, so please be cautious if you pick it up. Um, I hope it stays more in the vein that we were getting to towards the end, in, in which I mean, I hope that Mo Ren's decisions and his um, mentality continue to improve going forward because I just, the beginning of that book, I did not like, but as it went forward, I did like it a lot more about the time we got to the end, enough so that I have been pre-ordering all of the other books in the series as they are announced. So fingers crossed. I do want to continue this one and I do hope that I continue to like it as much as I did by the end of book one. And then I have another book in a series that I'm so excited to read, and that is Murtaugh by Christopher Paolini. This is the most recent book in the Inheritance Cycle, um, and we follow Murtaugh, who is a side character in the Inheritance Cycle, and his dragon, Thorn. And I really don't know what else I can say to you that's not going to spoil the main series, because Murtaugh's character you find out some things and, and he's very much part of some of the um, revelations in the main series. So I don't know how much I can say without spoiling it, but this does take place after uh, Inheritance right here, which is the fourth book in the main series. So I'm so excited to read this. I've just been kind of waiting until I can devote my attention to it. So work has been really hectic lately and I do think it will continue to be. In fact, I'm sure it will. <laughs> um, until exams are over and grades are in. So I am probably going to read this late this spring or at some point over the summer, but I'm just so excited because I love this series. It's so important to me. Um, it was just such a like milestone series for me as a kid growing up and I'm so excited to get back into this world. Like I, I can't even describe it to you. <laughs> Then I have another first book in a series, and this is actually the only one that's out in this series so far. It just came out fairly recently, and that is book one of Kraken Rider Z by David Estes and Dirk Ashton. If there's one thing dragons fear, it's a kraken. Even lowly hole scrubber Z Terra knows that. Like everyone on the island kingdom of Tosh, he grew up frightened by fables and horrible tales of the great beasts of the deep. It seems an odd thing to impress upon the children of the realm because, luckily for the dragons and their riders, no one has seen a kraken in a thousand years. Then again, Tosh's lifeblood is the sea. Royal dragon knights guard the king's ships from the constant threat of pirates, hostile empires, and the monstrous horrors that dwell beneath the waves. It makes sense that the people would fear krakens, even after generations of knights graduate and take flight from the ramparts of Triumph's citadel, the city's most elite, and therefore also exclusive, military academy. A school that Z, who has barely ever had more than two copper pennies to rub together, should have no chance of getting into. Thing is, Z has a secret. He's not only seen a kraken, he saved its life. When that truth gets out, will Z be hunted by the dragon knights he has always envied and admired, or will he become the first kraken rider in history? How awesome does that sound? So it seems like dragon riders are pretty commonplace in this world. And now Z is going to 
bond with this crack in who he saved and I mean look at how beautiful that cover is it just sounds amazing and I'm so excited to try it and then I have kind of a set of four books so I'm kind of counting it as one because I don't know if I'll read all of these this year but I definitely want to read at least one of them and those are the four books in the Tolkien Treasury collection by J.R.R. Tolkien so we have The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, Farmer Giles of Ham, Rover Random, and Smith of Wutung Major. Um, so again, I don't know that I'm going to get into all of these this year, but I love Tolkien and I do want to read everything that he's ever written. So I definitely want to read at least one of these. And Tolkien's works always give me such wonderful spring and summer vibes. So probably I'm going to try these sooner rather than later. Next I have another manga series. This one I wanted to try for quite a while now because it sounds like I'm going to just love it. And that is Magus of the Library. Um, this is based on a series by Sophie Schwimm and has been adapted into a manga by Mitsu Izumi. And the back says, The Magic of the Written Word. In the small village of Amun lives a poor boy named Theo. Named Theo. Which is my baby cousin's name. He just turned one. So <laughs> I know that doesn't matter for the book. I'm just, he was here visiting and now he's gone back home. So I'm a little sad. <laughs> but anyway, Theo adores books, but because of his pointed ears and impoverished life, he isn't allowed to use the village library. As he endures the prejudice and hatred of the village, he dreams of going where such things don't exist. Aftzak, city of books. But one day, Theo chances to meet a Kafna, a librarian who works for the great library of Afsak, and his life changes forever. So look at how pretty. The art style looks absolutely gorgeous, and I think it's going to be wonderful. I love books that are set in sort of a more like desert uh, style setting, like the Hurakwag and Varslin is one. I just think that they're so, it just makes for such beautiful scenery. Um, and we're gonna follow this boy who loves books and just wants to read and is having a hard life because of prejudice against him and his race and his social status and I just think it's gonna be wonderful and delightful and I'm so excited to try this. I have wanted to for a while and I have the first three volumes so I'm definitely going to try the series at some point this year. Then I have book one of Needle and Leaf by Andrew B. Meredith. So this is Thrice. A father and son flee those that seek the boy in his bottomless well of soul-searing magic. Joven will stop at nothing, even face the mysterious bear himself, for the chance at a normal life for the boy. Despite the wearying road and the darkness found around every corner, Thrice is a rich tale of found family and the road that binds travelers together. That's all it says on the back, but it sounds so interesting and intriguing. I want to know what's going on, and I think that it's going to have a lot of that, you know, family aspect and the father and the son, and I'm just excited to read this. It is an independently published book. It was a semi-finalist semi in um, SPFBO in 2022, and I've heard, I think it's Tori Tekken is the one who talked about this one and actually is where I found out about it from. Um, but it just, I think it's going to be nice and delightful and I'm just excited to try it and to find out more because honestly I don't know a lot about it, just what the back says, but I'm excited to, to try it. Then I have another book that you may have seen in a previous book haul and that is The Only Purple House in Town by Anne Aguirre. In a magical town like St. Clair, anything is possible. Iris Collins is the messy one in her family, the chaos bunny. Her sisters are all wildly successful while she can't balance her budget for a single month. It's no wonder she's in debt to her roommates. When she unexpectedly inherits a house from her great aunt, her plan to turn it into a B&B &B fails, as most of her plans do. She winds up renting rooms like a Victorian spinster, collecting other lost souls, and not all of them are human. Eli Reese grew up as the nerdy outcast in school, but he got rich designing apps. Now he's successful by any standards, but he's never had the same luck in finding a real community or people who understand him. Over the years, he's never forgotten his first crush, so when he spots her at a cafe, he takes it as a sign. 
except that he gets sucked into the iris verse and somehow ends up rent renting one of her B&B &B rooms. As the days pass, Eli grows enchanted by the misfit boarders staying in the house, and even more so by Iris. Could Eli have finally found a person and a place to call home? It just sounds so cute, and I love a cute romance. And also, if you look in the windows, you can see some of the non-human guests at the house. It just sounds so cute and so lovely, and I think it's going to be such a just heartwarming and wonderful read and so I had to put it on this list because I sometimes you need a sweet romance to just lift your spirits and make you smile and then I also hauled this book recently and it is definitely different from the others that have been on this list so far but this is The Prince of the Skies by Antonio Iturbe or Iturbe um this is a fictionalized account of the life of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Sorry if I said that incorrectly, French is not a language that I'm very familiar with, but he is the author of The Little Prince and someone that I look up to a lot. Um, and this is essentially like a, a novel based on his life and his mysterious passing. And I'm just so excited to read this. I feel like it's probably going to make me cry a lot, but I just, I love uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I think that his, his story is just amazing. And so I'm so excited to learn more about him. And I know that this is fictional, like a fictional account, but I do still think that I'm just going to absolutely adore this. And then I have another series that I'm continuing, but this is actually like a sequel series. So I read The Raven Cycle, um, last year I believe it was and I love it The Raven Cycle it's one of my favorite series of all times you can kind of see down here I've got several editions of it but there is a sequel sequel series called The Dreamer Trilogy also by Maggie Steve Otter so this is book one called On the Hawk I do have the entire trilogy um but you follow Ronan is one of the main characters from the Raven Cycle and I don't know how much more I can say than that without spoiling some stuff that happens in the first series but I love the Raven Cycle so much and I'm so excited to continue to just engage with these characters um and I don't know I'm just so happy that she did decide to continue it and so I do plan on reading all three of these books in the Dreamer Trilogy at some point this year. Then I have another new series that I would like to start. So this is Dawn Thief by James Barclay. This is the first book in Chronicles of the Raven, which is the first series in, I think it's called The Raven Saga. And so I bought a book called Elf Sorrow several years ago, um, which is the first book and I found out the second series in this world. So I was like, well, darn, now I need to get the first series so that I can read it in publication order. I like to read like a broader world, like fictional worlds and these bigger series in publication order when I can, because like when I'm aware of it, um, because I feel like you then get a lot more out of the like later books in that world. So I did get Dawn Thief because Chronicles of the Raven does come first. And so I'm going to try this. Elite, unstoppable and hired to do the unthinkable. The Raven are an elite, formed of six men and an elf, their swords for hire in the wars that have torn their land apart. For years, their only loyalty has been to themselves and to their code. But that time is coming to an end. The witch lords have escaped and the Raven find themselves fighting for the Dark College of Magic on a mission which soon becomes a race for the secret location of Dawn Thief. It's a spell with the power to end the world and there are forces out there willing to use it. So again, another epic fantasy. It the Chronicles of the Raven, I think, is a trilogy. So there are three books in this one before you get to Elf Sorrow. So if I like this, then I'm definitely going to continue it so I can continue in this world. Next, I have a standalone, which we haven't had a lot of in this list, but that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. What happens when America's first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales? When his mother became president of the United States, Alex Claremont Diaz was promptly cast as the American equivalent of a young royal. 
handsome, charismatic genius, his image is pure millennial marketing gold for the White House. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with an actual prince, Henry, across the pond. And when the tabloids get, a get hold of a photo involving an Alex Henry altercation, US British relations take a turn for the worse. Heads of family and state and other handlers devise a plan for damage control, stage a truce between the two rivals. What at first begins as a fake Instagram Instagrammable friendship grows deeper and more dangerous than either Alex or Henry could have imagined. Soon, Alex finds himself hurtling into a secret romance with a surprisingly unstuffy Henry that could derail the campaign and upend two nations. Casey McQuiston's red, white, and royal blue proves that true love isn't always diplomatic. So again, sometimes you just need a delightful uh, romance in your life, and I've heard so much praise for this one, so I definitely want to read that this year. Then another series that I want to continue, and also coincidentally another romance, is Sasaki and Miyano by Sho Harusono. So again, this is a manga series. This is volume nine. So I have read the first eight. Uh, volume nine is the most recent one in the main series that is out, but there are also a couple of light novel companions. Um, and then the Hirano and Kagiura spinoff series, which follows their friend Hirano and his roommate Kagiura. And then also a comic anthology. So I do have everything that's out in this world so far. So I'm showing you volume nine, but I have quite a bit to get through. They are very short though, so you can go through them very quickly. But this series follows Mino and Sasaki, who meet at their all boys high school. And Sasaki falls in love with Mino. Um, so they start out as friends, but Sasaki has a huge crush on Mino and it's about them kind of figuring themselves out, Miyano deciding what he wants and their relationship developing. And then you also see them interacting with their friends and stuff. And it's just so sweet and delightful. It is one of my favorite manga series ever. I love it so much. So I'm definitely gonna continue this one this year and catch up on it before they announce volume 10 in the main series. Okay, so we have five more books to go in this list. So next I want to continue Songs of Chaos by Michael R. Miller. So this is the third book, Defiant. I have read the first two books in the series and I am loving it so far. There is also a novella. Um, I can't remember what it's called right now, but I do have that as well that I'll read after I read Defiant. So this series we follow Holt, who is a the son of the cook at a like dragon um, stronghold where the dragons and their riders stay. And one day cook discovers that dragon eggs are actually destroyed if they show any kind of weakness. So any kind of deformity. Um, and so he ends up saving a dragon egg and he hatches a blind baby dragon who he names Ash. And so the story goes from there and Holt and Ash end up bonding, which is not supposed to happen. He is, has not been chosen, has not been given the opportunity to try to bond with a dragon, and plus his dragon is like defective, quote unquote. So there is some dragon prejudice in this, um, but we follow them and as things go terribly wrong and they end up going on this adventure and discovering this great evil in the world. Um, it's just wonderful. It is definitely one of those just epic dragon rider fantasies but it does have like a progression element so uh as a dragon and their rider move up in rank they have to actually like reach different levels of power together so it does have this like progression throughout it it is a type of progression fantasy and i love it so much i am i loved the first two books and i feel like the writing just keeps getting better as we go so i'm really excited to read this one then I have the Strange the Dreamer duology by Lainey Taylor. So you may have seen I got these beautiful Illumicrate editions recently. Um, and I do want to read this. So this is book one, Strange the Dreamer, but I do also have Muse of Nightmares. And I would like to read this series this year. The dream chooses the dreamer, not the other way around. 
And Laszlo Strange, war orphan and junior librarian, has always feared that his dream chose poorly. Since he was five years old, he's been obsessed with the mythic lost city of Weep, but it would take someone bolder than he to cross half the world in search of it. Then a stunning opportunity presents itself in the person of a hero called the Godslayer and a band of legendary warriors, and he has to seize his chance or lose his dream forever. What happened in Weep 200 years ago to cut it off from the rest of the world? What exactly did the, did the Godslayer slay that went by the name of God? And what is the mysterious problem he now seeks help in solving? The answers await in Weep, but so do more mysteries including the blue-skinned goddess who appears in Laszlo's dreams. How did he dream her before he knew she existed? And if all of the gods are dead, why does she seem so real? So again, this is one of those series that I've heard so much praise for. I'm just so excited to try it. It sounds so whimsical and mysterious and just delightful. And then I have another series that I'm super excited to get into, and that is The Echo Saga by Philip C. Quintrell. So this is the first series in his world of Verda. I think it's just called Verda, maybe. Um, but this is book one, The Rise of the Ranger. The echoes of fate, a prophecy uttered unto the world a thousand years ago, cannot be denied. Mankind has lorded over the land of Ilion for a thousand years, enjoying what was left to them by the elves as if it were their birthright. A thousand years is a long time for an immortal race to see the error of their ways and realize a truth that has remained unsaid for a millennia. Elves are superior. They are faster, stronger, and connected to the magical world in a way that man could never grasp. Ilion is their birthright. The six kingdoms of man are fractured, unallied, and always clawing at each other's doors for more power. War is coming. Thrown into the heart of this war is an outlander of the wilds, an assassin, a ranger. Asher was born a thousand years ago, but he doesn't remember. Forty years of brutal training and killing for money has beaten the earliest years of his life away, leaving his ties to the oldest of evils a mystery to all. <laughs> So yes, this sounds really interesting. So we're going to have like potentially war maybe between different human kingdoms, but also between humans and elves. We have Asher, our main character, who for some reason has lived for a thousand years and has some memory loss. And also there is a dragon on the cover. So I'm excited. I've heard so much praise again for Philip C. Quintrell's writing and Verda is a very extensive world. This is just the first series in it, so I'm really excited to, to try this and to start to explore this world that he has created. And then I have another kind of extensive series of ser smaller series that I want to get into, and that is The World of the White Rat by T. Kingfisher. So Clock Tower War is the first series in the world of the white rat and clockwork boys is the first book in that series <laughs> a paladin an assassin a forger and a scholar ride out of town it's not the start of a joke but rather an espionage mission with deadly serious stakes t kingfisher's new novel begins the tale of a murderous band of criminals and a scholar thrown together in an attempt to unravel the secret of the clockwork boys mechanical soldiers from a neighboring kingdom that promise ruin to the dowager's city. If they succeed, rewards and pardons await, but that requires a long journey through enemy territory directly into the capital. It also requires them to refrain from killing each other along the way. At turns darkly comic and touching, Clockwork Boys puts together a broken group of people trying to make the most of the rest of their lives as they drive forward on their suicide mission. So again, I think we're going to have some found family here. Um, and The World of the White Rat, like I said, has other series in it. And another one is her, or is T. Kingfisher's Saint of Steel series, which I do have the first book of Paladin's Grace because I got it from Fox and Wit. So I'm going to start with Clock Tower War and then go publication order until I get there and just continue because again, I've never read a T. Kingfisher and I've just heard so many people just exclaim over her works. So I'm very excited to try this. And interestingly, my brother is also gonna try T. Kingfisher soon, but he is trying her horror series, which I can't remember the name of the series, but I know the first book is What Moves the Dead, which he found at a used bookstore. So 
I think he's excited to read that one. He's much more of a horror fan than I am personally. And then the final book on this list is once again the first book in a series and that is You Can Have My Back by Minami Kotsina. Kotsina. I'll never let you go again. When Ionia, proud knight of the realm, loses his life in a violent insurrection, his memories are inherited by a boy born one day after his death. Years later, Le Leirino Casso, Cassio, Cassio? <laughs> fourth son of the Margrave of Brungwart and blessed with angelic beauty, begins to see Ionia's memories in his dreams. He, re he relives Ionia's ill-fated romance with the king's younger brother, Prince Gravis, as well as his death at the hands of a traitor to the kingdom. But as Leorino, or Leorino, tries to make sense of the feeling swelling in his chest, he stumbles too close to the truth of that fateful day. The traitor's identity is revealed, and in a panic, the traitor threatens to end himself and take Leorino with him. As Leorino's life hangs in the balance, he instinctively cries out for his only hope. The love of his past life, Gravis. So again, we've got some romance, we have some reincarnation, uh, recovering memories. It just sounds like it's going to be fun, maybe have quite a bit of drama. And like I said, this is the first book in a series. So if I like it, then I will have more to continue on with. All right, so that is the end of the list. Thank you all so, so much for watching and for going through these books for me. Those are 35 books or series that I want to either try or continue in the year 2024. Um, it's a lot, so, and I'm, I'm aware that it's a lot. Um, and that's, like I said, not even including books and series that I feel like I want to read in a certain season. So again, going forward, that is something that I want to do at the beginning of each new season is just look at all of the books I have that I haven't read yet that remind me of that season that I would like to get into. And I can't promise that I will keep all of those books within their season. For example, Black Butler is something that I feel very reminded of like in the winter for some reason. Um, but I might start that <laughs> soon-ish. I don't know. Um, even though it's no longer winter, but these are 35 books or series that I do want to prioritize just at some point during the year, not necessarily in a, at a certain point in time, but at some point this year I would like to read these. So we'll see how many of them I actually get through. Maybe I'll do a video at the end of the year or the beginning of next year to see how many I actually read, like what progress I made on this list. We'll see. Um, but I am quite a bit of a mood reader, so I do read things as I find interest in them, uh, or not even find interest because I'm interested in all of them all the time, um, but just as they catch my fancy or as for some reason I just feel the urge to read it at that moment. Uh, and this is not even including books that I don't own, <laughs> uh, that you know, maybe are on pre-order or something and are going to come in later this year, but hopefully I'll be able to get through at least most of these. But again, thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope that this was fun. I hope that maybe you saw some things that you are now excited to check out for yourselves. Um, or maybe you've read some of these and if you have and you think that I should prioritize those over others, please let me know in the comments. I would love to, to hear your thoughts. Um, or if you have any books that you're really excited to read or that you're trying to prioritize this year, feel free to let me know that as well. Um, for an emoji, if you would like to leave one, let's do a dragon since we have so many dragon books in this list. Um, but yeah, so thank you all so much for being here. I, I look forward to, you know, sharing these videos with you guys every week. This has been such a fun thing that to start this year. Um, and so I look forward to seeing you guys in my next one. I hope that you're having a wonderful afternoon or day and that, you know, things are going well for you. And I just thank you all for hanging out with me. Bye.